corner. So what we've got here is a triangle. We're trying to find the area of this triangle, and it's really hard because we don't know. The base is easy. You can just decide which one is the base. So you can say this 14 is the base. Just turn it up that way if you wanted to. But then working out the height is really hard. Okay? So I need you to understand some bits and pieces about what's going on here. First of all, some conventions. Okay? You need to understand these conventions and you need to follow them. Okay? If you don't follow them, you're going to stuff up really badly. Okay? In any triangle, any triangle. So here's a triangle, just a random one. If I call this angle here, this corner, capital A, then the opposite side is called small a. If I call this corner, capital B, then the opposite is called small b. If I decide to call this corner, capital C, then that becomes small c. It doesn't have to be ABC. You can call it PQR, XYZ. But I need you to understand that the opposite side to an angle is always the small letter of that angle. So all corners must be given capitals. Okay? So a small letter will always define a side. So if I said to you, little a is 20, then I've told you that this length is 20. Okay? It's a convention. Okay? Great. Now, I also need you to understand the concept of flanking sides. If I want this angle here, which two are the flanking sides? B and C. Because if I remove that, I've still got the angle. So I need these two to go with that angle. Okay? Equally, if I wanted to use that angle there, then what are the two flanking angles? Tell someone near you. A and C. Okay, so now you understand that concept. Okay, this is the area of a triangle. A lot, lot easier than half the base times the height. Now, if you know the height and you know the base, then use half the base times the height. It's obviously going to be quick and easy. But on this one, you're going to use this formula and you are going to use it a lot because it's far more valuable. And that is this formula. The area of a triangle is one half times by A times by B times by the sine of C. So we call that half AB sine C. And that is the formula for the area of any triangle, not just one where you know the height. Okay? Now at this point, capital C obviously defines an angle, doesn't it? We've already talked about that. So, which one of these three corners would you like me to call C? the one with the angle on it. Yes, because capital C wants an angle. There's no point putting it there then, is it? Because I haven't got that one. So what you're going to do, you're now fixed to putting a C here. Okay? Now, if this triangle had already been labelled X, Y, Z, and you needed the C for the formula, cross out one of the letters and put a C in instead. It's allowed. You can relabel it as you want to. Okay? So we put a capital C there, which means that by default, this must become little c. Where am I going to put the big letter A? Actually, I don't care. Because there's no angle here, there's no angle here. So it's not going to affect anything. So I'm now going to put a big letter A here, and a big letter B here. And if I'd done that the other way around, it would still be okay. So now this becomes little b, and this becomes little a. So just by dint of labelling it like that, I now have a formula here. We already know that you can substitute. Okay, so what we can do is say that the area is one half times by little a, which is now six, times by little b, which is now eight, times by the sine of 110 degrees. And we just type that directly into our calculator and we get an answer. And that is the area of a triangle provided your calculator is in degrees. Okay, watch out. Your calculator might be in radians. Okay, so make sure your calculator is in degrees. Okay, if I could just borrow somebody's graphical calculator, I'll show you how to check.
We're being recorded, so hurry up, please. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. So, so, so under the screen then. So, so to set your calculator, what you do is you press, you turn it on for a start, that's always a good move. Okay, when you first get your calculator, okay, because at the moment, this doesn't seem to want to turn on. Oh. We've got the batteries in the right way. For some reason, your calculator isn't turning on. Which is a bit odd. So, assuming you've got all nice new batteries, yeah, you're a good man. There we go. So there you are. So when you first open your calculator, it looks like that. You're going to press one for the run menu, which is the normal doing math stuff. Okay. To set it into degrees, you're going to need the setup menu. Now, anything in yellow requires the shift button first. Anything in red requires the alpha button. So you press shift menu and you get this set up. And there's lots of bits and pieces in here. But the key thing here is this angle is in rads. So what you're going to do, you're going to use the down arrow and you're going to scroll it down until you get to there. And now you've got three choices, degrees, radians or gradients. Now whenever you see these little boxes down here, they refer to these buttons. So the first box is the first button. And the second box is the second button and so on and so on. So you want it in degrees, so you're going to press the first button, and you'll see it's changed it into degrees. So then you can just press the blue button at the bottom. And now, remembering my question, a half A, B, sine C, a half times 6 times 8 times sine 110, you're going to quite literally type that in. So you're going to go 1 half, okay, times by 6, times by 8, times by sin 110. And you press equals, and you get 22.55, okay? Okay, now I haven't given you any centimetres, so we don't know if it's centimetres squared or anything like that. But here's my point. Because I wrote it properly, when it came to using my calculator, all I did was type in what I wrote. Okay? If you write it properly, you set your calculator ready to go. Okay? If you try and do your calculator first and then start writing it, you're getting a right mess. Okay? And that's how you do it. That's how easy it is to find the area of a triangle. The mistake people will make is the, is the labelling of things, or oh, they use this one. Well, this one was a C. I wanted A and B, obviously. Now, for those of you who are really crap at remembering formula, don't worry. In the exam, this will be given to you. We don't expect you to remember the formula. We expect you to remember to use it. That's the end of the video.